late or absolutely a little bit late a couple minutes late I knew it was optimistic scheduling this for four o'clock I, I, I knew it was a little bit optimistic scheduling this for four o'clock so it's coming up on 403 in these eastern the eastern United States and so let me see if I can find the video here to make sure that we're live and to see what the audio is like. Let's see here, it looks like we are live. This for four so okay, so the good news is the audio is okay. We don't have the the classic chipmunk voice, if you guys are aware. I just came in from a long walk and it was a little bit warm, so my bracelet's out a little bit. I'm gonna push it back in because I'm back here in the air conditioning. I had it out two two clicks and this is the titanium stunner. The uh, I think it's SBGA 231. I never can keep the model numbers straight on these watches, but in any event, it's the Grand Seiko titanium dive watch. Not a limited production. So Paul is in the house. He says hi all. And this is kind of like this is almost an emergency broadcast. This is um, I'm gonna I'm gonna address one thing. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna address a. A really, I get I get a lot of stupid YouTube comments, and I got a I got a winner, I got a doozy. Uh, so we're, I'm going to go through. I'm going to parse through this because some folks can learn something from some of this. This is what we do this for: is to help other folks learn about watches and high-end accessory items and audio gear and camera equipment and all kinds of things we do on this channel. This is kind of an all over the place channel. And I know another comment from somebody on another video, I don't care about your routers and, and I don't care about your camera equipment. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I said, listen, there's there, there are literally probably a million YouTube channels out there. Pick another one. That's how that works. Just pick another one. So to watch, that's how that all works, because we're going to do it the way we're going to do it on this channel. So, so first of all, on the ugly watches theme, I saw something in one of the forums, in one of the watch forums, uh, about Invicta. Let me see if I can pull it up. I, if I could, if I could pull this watch up, and see, um, see if I can find it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it or not, but let me just close out some things here on my Facebook. Oh, shoot. I think maybe you probably might be hearing Facebook. Oh, maybe not. Hopefully the audio's muted. But in any event, I'm going back to the Facebook homepage. I'm going to put in Invicta here and see if I can find this, um, this posting because they just came out with some just horrendously ugly watches um, just horrendous uh, and of course it's not hard to pick a, an ugly Invicta watch right okay so let me just go to I'm just gonna go to the Invicta watch page here okay there we go <laughs> right on the <laughs> right there on the home page I mean who in the world would wear that watch. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. What's it like 25 millimeters thick and like 50 millimeters across the wrist and just, excuse my French, just butt ugly? And here's the thing I did a review on an Invicta 9937 and another different Invicta, two, of, two different ones. The 9937 is actually a pretty cool watch. It's a Submariner homage or uh, whatever word you want to use, a copy, whatever. And it's pretty good. It it got solid end links in the bracelet. It's pretty well made. They're kind of hard to find at the 9937 Invicta. But look at this. Look at these watches here. I mean, are you kidding me? Are are we are we just going out of our way now to build something that just couldn't be uglier and then put it on our wrist? Who, please let me know in the chat. Would you guys wear that any of those watches? Those those four watches there in a row. Would you guys watch? Would you guys watch any of uh, watch? Would you guys wear any of those watches? <laughs> let, let me know. And I know I'm starting at an early time on this. Please let 
on this broadcast, so we don't have, don't have too many folks in here yet. We've only got 18 folks in here watching right now. So, But let me know, please, let me know. Would any of you all wear those watches? I mean, am I just out of touch here on this? And I watched a, um, I watched a show, uh, Tim, you know, his show, and he was talking about some watches, and he was talking about a bunch of ugly watches, too. Of course, he often does, but, but then at the very end of the show, somebody had asked him or whatever what his criteria for a watch was, and, and one of the things he said was the style and how it looks on his wrist. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how many style points this one gets, and I'm not sure how good it would look on any wrist. But here's the thing. The ugly watches are alive and well, folks. They are alive and well. Now, she can wear anything on her wrist, the one in the red top there, and she'll, she'll look fine. That's no, no problem there. Um, I'll grant, oh, my gosh, look at this. Look at this. Are we kidding, folks? Come on now, folks. Somebody's playing a practical joke on me. Somebody is playing a practical joke on me. This, this is not real. This, this, these watches cannot be real, folks. Come on. Come on. Something's going on here, folks. Please let me in on the gag. Is this a practical joke on, on Craig? Now, you know, I, I, a big watch, I mean, I, I've got a 7.25-inch wrist, and I think this 44-mil watch, it's 14 mils thick, but it's got a nice shape to the lugs where it kind of drapes around the wrist nicely. This is the absolute max. I would not wear anything any bigger than this, period. And if I had a smaller wrist, I wouldn't even wear this. But this, I think, works on my wrist just barely. And the reason it works as far as comfort in wearing it is because of the titanium makes it super comfortable. It wears more like a 40. But for my old tired eyes, weak eyes I can read this even without my reading glasses on so that's why I really love this watch is it's so legible in any lighting conditions and of course we already know about the accuracy the accuracy only rivaled by this piece here they're actually pretty close both of them are pretty close to um, you know within a second or two after like three or four months it's just insane how accurate these things are inside of a second a month um, let's see here uh, they even have Batman watches. They are ugly. <laughs> if somebody would give them a present, I would get rid of it ASAP. Invicta World Headquarters is located in Hollywood, Florida. No joke. Well, there you go. I'm selling all my luxury watches and investing in Invicta. <laughs> you don't know that. There you go. The watch lounge is getting heavy in Invicta. And I'm talking heavy. Uh, hi, Craig from... Bogota, Colombia. What do you think about the Breitling Navitimer A23322, 41 mil? Well, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look. Cut over here until I do this. Okay, I'm not sure if we're getting the right one here. This is what came up on the site. There's a there. There it is. A two three three two two. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's take a look. I mean, to me, I, I, it's a cool-looking watch. I don't like watches with busy dials, so, of course, this would knock it out for me. But it's a, it's a cool-looking watch, and I would definitely get it on the bracelet because you can always add a strap, as, as Tim always says. 
I think it's a cool looking watch for forty three hundred dollars. I you know you're you're close to uh, being able to buy one of these for that kind of money and get a spring drive, very very close. So unless you need those complications, unless you're really like enamored with those com complications. I would get a Grand Seiko spring drive and just call it a day because it's going to run for decades. Not, it's not going to need to be serviced or anything. They're just bulletproof, reliable. But it all depends. If you like those complications, then uh, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't nix it. Let's see. I can have 90 to 100 Invictus <laughs> for my Zenith, Breitling, and Omega go for. There you go. Why don't you wear your GMT off and James Madison in the house? Well, right now, if I put it on, it would be a little bit snug on my wrist, just a little bit, because it's really sized for fall and winter time, which is when I wear my long sleeve shirts and I need something to be able to slip underneath the shirt cuffs. And so in the summer, I typically don't wear the long sleeves. If I do, I have them rolled up. I have my sleeves rolled up. So that's why I'm wearing this watch, because it's not a non-issue. This will not go underneath my shirt cuffs. So in the summertime, this is kind of my 24-7 go-to. That one you will see on my wrist come the cooler weather when I'm wearing the long sleeve shirts. So I hope that, um, I hope that answers that question. Let's see. I'm only being sarcastic. Because <laughs> I think we could tell. For $40 diver beater the only Invict I'd consider is the pro diver not a bad watch for yeah the one to get watch lounge pull it up do a search on it is the 9937 the 9937 if you get a good one there's quality control issues with all Invictus right but if you get a good 9937 which I had one that was a good one it ran a little bit fast and that is a, actually a pretty pretty good watch I think that's the best Invicta you can you can get the 9937. Check it out. It's got solid end lengths. It's, it's, it's just a decent watch. Uh, Blue Shirt Boot is in the house. He says hello to everybody. And uh, Peter says hi to... to uh, uh, you, guys, you guys with these complicated username. <laughs> Wesley Howdy here. <laughs> Whatever this is. Come up with simpler names like... Joe Smith. I mean, if you're going to make up a name anyway, come up with something simpler so that I'll know, you know, how to refer to you. Okay, so let's go on to this. Um, let's go on to this comment, this idiot comment. And this is the, this was just a classic. Okay, <laughs> you guys can read along with me. I copied and pasted it onto my um, into a Google Doc. I've started a new Google Doc called "Stupid YouTube Comments," and this is the first one on it. I might make this doc public at some point. <clears throat> so Voyager, who has zero subscribers and has zero vids, and he's been on YouTube since, uh, no, I'm sorry, he posted this comment on July 22, 2019. Uh, let's see. I have high-end watches like yourself. I agree with your opinion on investment with watches. The comparison with the 500 is not a good example to use. You give me the impression you're not an investo the way you are using your words in this video. Most of the rich have high debt that I know of and still live high lifestyle. Their incomes and or assets are always more than their debt in all cases. Yes, watches are made to wear and enjoy regarding buying, I think most people today can afford high-end watches if they want to, but if one doesn't have the lifestyle to match, why spend the money? It can be more difficult wearing high-end watches lacking the lifestyle to go with it. For example, where does one go wearing a solid gold Rolex? It can easily be stolen and one can get into trouble with robberies, etc. Being in regular places with high-end jewelry I don't agree with your gold Rolex as a tool watch. When one invests in a solid gold watch, as he's saying invests, okay, in solid gold watches, they are considered as jewelry class watches. I don't agree with your cleaning. 
I never use any brushes on my Omega or Rolex series watches, for example. They are never that dirty anyways. Soft soap only. Never use Dawn dishwasher soap. It's hard on the rubber seals with cotton cloth only to avoid any scratches. Okay, so we'll, well, I'll stop right there for now and let's address what he said so far. <laughs> so here's this idiot acts like he knows something about investing and knows something about the wealthy and so on and so forth and making all these broad platitudinous statements about wealthy people and so on and so forth. But here's the deal. Um, Dave Ramsey and his crew did the most extensive uh, study recently in the, over the last two years I think they did it study of millionaires in these United States and it turns out that the vast majority of the millionaires do not hold significant amounts of debt and do not leverage debt to make their money the vast majority of millionaires in this country do it by saving and investing and not by borrowing money it's a myth that that most wealthy people most millionaires I'll put it that way most millionaires do it by by leveraging debt that's a total myth so that he's totally wrong there. Now, a gold Rolex, not a tool watch? Ask Jack Nicholas. He's worn his for 50 years, deep sea fishing, doing all kinds of things. It's his only watch. He wears it all the time. A day date is an extremely rugged, heavy duty watch. They hold up great. They're extremely well made. I've worn day dates for 40 freaking years. This guy's gonna coach me on wearing a day date? I wore it in all kinds of circumstances. You just wear it. It's just a watch. It's not a piece of jewelry that you baby. And as far as cleaning your watches, I said many times, I've used toothpaste and, and toothbrush to clean my watches a lot of times. I don't abuse it. I don't rub the heck out of them. And I, I'm careful about how I do it. But, hey, they look fine. They look fine, including the date date. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's got abrasive in it. I'm in a hurry. I'm cleaning my watch. My, it's got a bunch of dead skin inside the bracelet, grime, whatever. Yes, my watches do get dirty. I don't baby them. I don't take them off when I wash dishes, when I wash a car or whatever, you know, and whatever kind of grime and all gets on them. It just gets on them. This one's pretty grimy right now. It's been about a week or two since I cleaned it. It's kind of grimy. Could use a cleaning. But I just clean it. It's just a watch to me. I buy these things to use. And a lot of people, believe it or not, are just like me. A lot of people go in and see a watch they like and they buy it. And guess what they do? They wear it. They don't sit it in a box, in the safety deposit box, and worship it. They wear the damn thing. And if it gets a scratch on it, it gets a scratch on it. Let me pull up a picture of my day date. And, and show you how terrible it looked after 19 years of maintenance by yours truly. See if I can pull it up here. Because I've got a fairly recent picture of it. Let's see here. Yeah, here's one that I've shown before. There you go. Okay, now now you tell me, folks. You tell me. Okay, yes, it's got some fine scratching on it, some like hairline type little scratches all over the case, everywhere on the case, everywhere it's got little fine scratches. It looks freaking gorgeous. That picture was taken when the watch was about 19 years old. That's when I took that picture. Okay? Looks pretty damn good to me after 19 years of almost daily use. Yes, was it in rotation with the GMT Master a lot of times? Was it in rotation with my Omega a lot of times where maybe I'd be going out and doing some yard work where I was doing something that would really potentially be abusive? Maybe I switched off and put the GMT Master on or put on the Omega? Yeah, I would do that sometimes. But sometimes, no. Sometimes I just keep wearing that watch. I don't take my watches off 
because I think they're going to get harmed. The watch is a wristwatch. It's on my freaking wrist. Okay, that's how we roll here. So, so okay, so let's go back to this idiot's... Oh, for, first, let me uh, touch base on your comments. I should turn the air conditioning up a little bit here. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating a little bit, actually. It's a little bit hot in here. I'm, I'm a little bit cheap, too. We'll get to that. We'll, look, we'll get to my thrift uh, as we progress here, but let's see. And somebody's got a blue Milgaus on, polished links and all. That can take some abuse, absolutely. And I'd let those polished center links get some patina on them. I think they'd look fine. Uh, Dark Digger will be, okay. Um, hey, pal. Um, okay, thanks a lot for your opinion, Craig. I've always wanted a Navitimer, but i definitely considering a GS at some point. You're the GS governor. I just, and that's the other thing, I did have somebody also comment, and we'll get to this, that, that they, they, they think I should broaden my horizons. I should talk about more different kinds of watches and so on and so forth. With my gear, I try to get the best equipment for, for my use case, what will work best for me, and then I use it. And now if I come across a watch that's better than this, that's a better option than this for what I need and what I do, I will certainly consider it. But I'm not going to consider something lesser just because it, it broadens my horizons, okay? It, like when I was wearing the Date 8, right? I, I, I wasn't going to consider like a steel and gold date just. That would be going backwards, okay? So when I get something that's that's kind of really meeting my needs and doing doing what I want that piece of kit, that piece of gear to do, I'm good to go, right? But I'm always looking for something better. Don't get me wrong. I'm always open-minded and looking for something better. More worried about scratching car paint than scratching watch while washing cars. Well, yeah, cars, car, the paint on cars takes a lot of abuse. Um, Stunning the ultimate Rolex, in my opinion. Vegas in the house. The new Navitimer is pretty good. Watch Doctor. By the way, did you check the new Spring Drive GMT on gold and blue dialed uh, GS? Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty cool watch. That's absolutely a pretty cool watch. Yeah, okay, so let's do this. Let me go back to, to the comments, comments here. <laughs> let's go back to the idiot comments. Um, pull this back up. Okay, so here we go. All right, so, and well, I'll try to get through the rest of this, so then we can just hang out. Okay, they're considered as jewelry glass watches. I don't agree with your cleaning. I never use any brushes on my Mega Rolex series watch, watches, for example. They are never that dirty anyways. Uh, soft soap only, never use Dawn dish washer soap it's hard on the rubber seals yeah right okay he reads all this stuff in forms right so it's true with a cotton cloth only to avoid any scratches and almost all of my collection of watches is pretty well scratch free H how's that well I would say if you've got a collection of watches and you're broke I would say you should um, uh, Revisit your priorities. It sounds, and I, I'm pretty sure this guy's probably broken in debt. Um, I never wear high-end watch doing any kind of physical work whatsoever. That keeps the scratches off, especially the gold watches. I may have some micro scratches on those because gold is especially prone to micro scratching. Don't agree with your opinion on hitting a watch. I don't know what I said about hitting a watch. It's the force of the arm hitting the object, nothing to do with the weight of the watch once it's on the wrist, and it also depends on how tight it is on the wrist. The weight of the watch has to be very substantial to make that big of a difference, in which in most cases it isn't nonsense. I guess this guy doesn't agree with the laws of physics. I guess that's what he's saying. Um, with With being broke wearing a Rolex that has nothing to do with one status. We could be all wearing high-end watches and driving high-end cars with loads of cash and living the good life. 
Meanwhile, the U.S. is trillions of dollars in debt. What's the difference? The way the economy is today, we'll all sink together one day, rich and poor. Think about it. <laughs> okay, so here you go. So that's the mindset of these, these folks that are broke and in debt is, oh, it doesn't matter because the economy is going to go to hell in the handbasket anyway where the country is deeply in debt and all that. So I might as well just borrow money and buy a whole bunch of watches and have them sitting in boxes at home and make sure that they don't get scratched. Um, that's, that's a pretty good, cool plan. I, I think this guy's got a pretty good plan there together that a lot of folks are following this plan, so it must be a good one. So, no, I'm not going to go there. Uh, that's not how I operate. I buy the watches that I want to wear, and they're on my wrist. And I do save and invest, and I do not carry any debt. And I think that relieves pressure. I think when you don't have a car payment, a house payment, or any kind of payment, I think it takes pressure off of you, and you can live a more enjoyable life. That's just my my take on it, and that's what I recommend that, that, that uh, folks do. So let's see here. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was a pretty silly comment. What do you think, guys? Am I overreacting? Is the guy making a lot of sense? Does he sound like a really smart guy? Or does he sound like pretty much an idiot? Uh, let, me, let me know what you think about that. Um, and somebody loves the Vacheron overseas. Send me a photo, watch, doctor. I'll bring it up. Email me a photo. We'll put it up on the screen and see what people say. The watch doctor, I have the new Navitimer on order. Expect August, September. There you go. A new Navitimer coming in the house. Let me try to pull one up. Now, are you talking about the same model? Is this, when you say the new one, are you talking about the same model that we were looking at, or is this a, can you give me a different model number to uh, pull up? Our Wags is in the house. Our Wags, did you get a notification this time? Let me know if you got a notification, because you're, you're in late. I started early. This was pretty much an emergency broadcast, uh, because we had some issues we had to deal with. And Steve wasn't doing a show, so I figured I would get in here and uh, try to hold hold up hold things up here. So, by the way, let Steve know. Send him an email to Steve at LittleTreasury.com. Let him know you want more shows. Take some of the some of the pressure off me, because he's got a bunch of watches he can show. Hey Craig and everyone, fancy giving me a wrench. Charles Moore in the house. Okay, Vegas, you're in the house. R. Wags is in the house. Blue Shirt Buddha in the house. How many people say we should give Charles a wrench? We need at least at least two wrench members need to need to um, speak up here. At least two. I'm okay with it if I can get two wrench members to say go for it then we'll make this happen right now. But it's got to be two wrench members. And there, it's not easy to convince wrench members to go with a new wrench. Let's see here. Chi Town is in the house. Uh, the one, two dot two. You'll love that watch. Uh, and I guess I guess Chi Town didn't want a wrench. I think we offered him a wrench at one point. I don't think he wanted a wrench at the time. I don't know why he wouldn't have a wrench. Uh, but again, I need two members of the wrench gang to chime in here and see what we're going on here. No, the Basil World model, the reissue. You may look up the Navitimer reissue as Navitimer 806. Okay. Let's see here. Eight oh six. Reissue. We're doing it right now. That's how we do here. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I don't mind cookies. Give me the cookies. I'll eat the cookies. Okay, here it is. I wonder, is this also available on a bracelet? 
but that that's cool looking I grant you that but I would really have to see one on my wrist in person to see how readable that thing is because that's an awful busy situation uh, you know macro shots do not tell the tale as far as what it's going to be like on wrist so there's that but I think they're cool I've always thought they were cool uh, even back in the day late 70s early 80s when I was first started buying the luxury watches we always thought the Breitling was cool it was always something on the radar screen we never bought them but it was always something on the radar screen uh, yeah I know I always pronounced a Chai Town I always pronounce him him wrong but that's that's a, a thing between he and I um, yes that's the beautiful one it's okay uh, let's see here uh, the ratio 806 Breitling is the one I was referring to good Breitling to buy yep I was notified of the show Gilbert Gilbert got a notification the hour and minute hand are so close to the same length on that Navitimer I got you yeah and 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 they don't go all the way to the end but that's the way the watch is designed you know they don't cover the whole dial but that's kind of the way it is it is what it is let's see here um, we didn't hear anybody chiming in as far as giving uh, Charles a wrench any any members of the wrench gang want to uh, chime in on that as to whether or not Charles Moore should get a wrench before he's um, off totally off out of the uh, chat here check in on the time do a quick time check I just purchased a sin Navitimer what do you think of the sin I have no experience with the sin sin watches no no experience no experience so I can't really say um, I think the important thing is if you like it and it looks good on your wrist that's how Tim wrapped up his show uh, yesterday and I think he he nailed it okay so I'm going I'm pulling up a sin here and here's one Here's one that, that uh, on a bracelet that looks pretty cool. I like that bracelet. So um, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that case design, though. That, that case design doesn't look very elegant to me. So, But again, it all comes down to how it looks on your particular wrist and how you like it on your wrist that's the controlling factor here because you got to wear the puppy Sin is a pretty robust tool watch pretty durable Tim Masso wears one there you go Sin 903 great bang for the buck Archie's Petek 5127 let's pull up a 5127 A fifty one twenty seven. Hmm. Is this white gold? Is that, um, hmm. Is that a fifty one twenty seven? Uh, with the shoulders, the crown shoulders. Yeah, 5127. That's a good looking watch. Personally, if I'm going to get a dress watch like that, I'm going to get I'm going to get it in yellow gold. And it's just the way I'm going to do. Cuz most of my other accessories are gold. So, but yeah, I mean it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, there's no no ifs ands or buts about that. 
That's a good one. I can't say I'm familiar with Charles Craig. Vegas can't say he's familiar with Charles. Charles is getting close, though. He's, he's been in a few times asking, so he's, he's getting close to getting a wrench. Let's see here. Craig, why, why did you sell your day date since you're considering to buy another one in the future? Peter in the house. I, I was having trouble reading it. The um, silver dial that mine had, there wasn't enough contrast between the hands and the dial. And if I was in good light, like outside or something, I could read it okay without my reading glasses. But in any kind of lower light situation, I just, it, it was a chore to read it. And so I, it got to the point where I wasn't wearing it as often. And whenever I'm not wearing a watch very much, its days are numbered. So if I do get another day date, it will have to be like a black dial, with something with more contrast, something that's more readable. And it might have to be a 40 mil day date 40 with the black dial. That might help with the readability. But I, I, it's it's certainly up in the air. I might not buy one, period. I, I mean... I might buy some other kind of a dress watch uh, to solve the problem. We'll see. Uh, for for sport, this has got this so solves that problem. That problem's dealt with, right? I don't need to go back to like a GMT Master or something like that. I mean, th this is this is this is serving the sport part of the equation. It's taken care of. The dress situation is what's still kind of up in the air. And for now, I've got that puppy to wear for now until I figure out something something in gold got to figure out something it's it's not this is all just the uh, just issues issues to resolve uh, but at that price for the send consider the Omega Seamaster pre-owned or even a Grand Seiko I hear you white gold yep Patek is the gold standard of watches you see, here's the only issue that I have with getting a Patek dress watch, for example, is they seem to be a little bit on the fragile side. They seem to be a little bit um, finicky. And that doesn't impress me. As Shania Twain would say, doesn't impress me much. I can't sing like her. But anyway, that doesn't impress me. I like watches to be rugged. Rugged, heavy duty. It's the beauty of a date eight is they're gorgeous and they're heavy duty. Um, <clears throat> what are the benefits and downsides from a bracelet versus a strap rubber leather in your opinion? I've just never gotten a strap to be comfortable for me and to be centered properly on wrist. And it's kind of a hassle to put them on and off. And if you get a deployment clasp, those are kind of complicated. I just, for me, the bracelets just seem to work, and I just seem to like them. Uh, so everybody's mileage varies. Some people love straps. It just seemed fiddly, and, and um, it, it just, if you get a really good strap, I think that's, uh, that's okay. Charles is a go from R Wags. Good enough for, for R Wags, good enough for me. Charles, okay. Uh... So Charles, we're gonna we're gonna give Charles a um, we're gonna give Charles a wrench. Uh, try to write. Try to write in a fair bit and contribute. Um, Vegas Mill gals, I did a call live. Got Rolex and cooking sauce. Okay, so we're gonna do Charles. We're gonna we're gonna give him a wrench. All right, it looks like he's got a wrench now. That's how that works. Roger gives a super chat. Roger, what do you think of Rolex Pepsi white gold meteorite? Very few have hit, very few have hit, I guess you mean the market, and it appears they will only be in limited amounts. I think, I think the watch is stunning. I, 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 I mean, it's stunning. 
I, if I would not personally, I would not spend the money for a white gold Rolex sport watch. If I'm going to go gold, I'm going to go yellow gold. That's me. I just love yellow gold. And like Tim was talking, well, that makes it kind of dated and all that. Not really. I think it makes it kind of timeless. I think yellow gold is always in vogue. It's always cool. It was cool in the 50s. It was cool in the 60s. It was cool in the 70s. It's cool in the 80s. I think yellow gold is always cool. I think these other things like rose gold and other things go in and out of fashion. But I think yellow gold is always a, a stalwart. I think you're always good with yellow gold. So I would buy, if I'm going to pony up that kind of money for a, uh, a gold Rolex, Roger, I would buy something in yellow gold. And if you're going to go with something that's 40 mils in yellow gold, do you have something against a day date 40? I think a day date 40 in yellow gold is just stunning, and the president bracelet is stunning. Now, if you absolutely have to have a sport watch, I would get. Um, do they make, do they make a GMT with the Jubilee bracelet in all gold? Let's let me go to the Rolex um, website here and see if they make that now. They used to always make it. I'm not up on what they're making these days. So let's go to Rolex and see what they got. See what they got on their website. Okay, Rolex watches. I'm finding now that these 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 websites are so difficult to navigate. I mean, they are terrible. Oh, by the way, I really like the Yachtmaster. So that would be an option for you in all gold. Classic watches, discover more. Professional watches, discover more. I guess they call these professional watches. So let me go here. I'm going to go ahead and walk through this with you. I'm going to try to find, find a watch here for, for Roger. We're going to try to find a stunner, a stunner for the Roger. GMT Master 2. All right, let's go to GMT Master 2. The Cosmopolitan Watch. Cosmopolitan Watch. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Please show me what you offer. Gosh, this is so, this is just painful. I can't even get to the models. Okay, here we go. We're finally getting to the models. All right. Um, GMT Master 2. Uh, there's the white gold. I guess I have to go to view all or do I go to configure? Let's do view all. All right, gold. We want gold. Now we're starting to make progress. GM2 Master 2, but see, that's got the oyster bracelet with the polished center links. I would not want to go that way. Let's see. Do they not offer it? This is insane. I, I'm spending five minutes here. I can't find... Okay, configure. This is just insane. Choose your material. Okay, Everose Gold. No, I don't want Everose Gold. Um, how do I do something else? Select. No, I don't want... I don't want Everose... All right, folks, I give up. I, I just, I, I, I give up. I can't, I can't go on the Rolex site and select the damn watch that I want. So if they make it a GMT-2 with a Jubilee bracelet, all 18 karat yellow gold, that would be a killer, 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 killer watch. Um, Roger says, I love the day date. Well, go do that then. 
do the date 840. You should be able to get one for about 28500 That's what Dudley paid for his. He got a significant discount. I think he bought it from a dealer down in Miami. I don't know if you know who Dudley is, but he's in the forums a lot. He's in the Rolex forum a lot, and I'm sure he would share with you how he got his at uh, for about 28500 brand new. Um... Hey, Craig, do you think Grand Seiko would compete more if they were to make timepieces in noble materials? Gilbert, I think they're at capacity, Gilbert. I, I don't think it's a question of them competing, and I don't think, I, I, I think the reason that they're not aggressively marketing and doing more things to market the timepieces is I think they're at capacity. I think they're selling every watch they can make at this point. And I don't think they want to create a scenario like Rolex has where they're big waiting lists and all that kind of stuff. I don't think they want to go there. So I think they're kind of making what they can sell, and they're happy with that scenario. And and they may slightly scale up because, they get, see, they got to hire really talented people because there's a lot of hand work in the watches. It's not like a machine-made watch like the Rolexes. It's, it's difficult for them to scale up. So I think they're kind of happy where they are with their production, and, and I think they'll slowly add some pieces here and there, some limited production pieces here and there, but I think they're just kind of keep doing kind of their thing. That's my take on them. No inside information, but that's just my take on how they act. Craig, I did get a notification but was outside working on my boat dock. Well, there you go. Uh, R. Wags is in motion. I wonder if he was wearing his Date 8 when he was out there working on the boat dock. And uh, <clears throat> Vegas says, congrats, Charles. And there you go, on the wrench. Uh, what do you think of the current Cellini? I've seen some Cellinis that are pretty cool. And I think a Cellini would be something that might get some consideration for a dress watch. I think you can get some bargains on on some, some of the Cellinis. Um I'm not even going to try to go to the Rolex website and look at what they've got. I'm just, uh, I'm over that. I mean, these websites are just terrible anymore. I mean, you know, it used to be you could go and you'd click on like GMT and they'd show you like all the different models that they have. Okay, you want a Jubilee, you want this, you, want, you just click on the one you want. You know, it, it was a piece of cake to find the watch you want. Now they got this fancy, these, these modern websites that you can't navigate, you can't find what you want. It's just a total cluster, you know what. And forget going to the AD. You can't see anything there. They don't have anything there to show you. So basically, you're you're like S out of luck if you want to know what Rolexes are available. Or what Rolexes are not available. <laughs> this is the way I should phrase it. Um, Jubilee is only on the steel GMTs. Oh, excuse me. Oyster for all gold and two-tone. That's a shame. That's a shame. That's sad, sad, sad. Uh, then I'd, I'd definitely go with the Date 840 then. It wouldn't even be a stretch. Um, <clears throat> never liked, Never liked gold like I enjoy silver it's a shame they don't make watches in silver more often that, that's an interesting point silver well you can always go for titanium it's kind of cool comfortable on wrist uh, let's see I've got the Rolex 116234 white dial and you have all seen it I've been thinking it could be a great idea if they made it two-tone, but in white gold. White gold through the Jubilee with the bezel. So you're thinking white gold, steel, steel and white gold? Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to go there. But um, I do like the... Um, I do like the uh, Yachtmaster with the platinum bezel I think that's cool super super cool because it's only like 11.7 mils thick and it's you can get a 40 mil one and it's about 11.7 mils thick and it's got the nice case much more attractive case on it than the uh, super case so that's a really cool watch 
Um, don't forget to rack, whack the trolls with the wrench. Yeah, this is a troll-free zone. Saw a GMT me meteorite at British Golf Open. Presenter Paul McKinley was wearing one. Looked beautiful. Wow, yeah, I'm sure it did. I'm sure that's a stunning piece. But a day date 40 would have also looked stunning, you got to admit. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, the new date just, and the day date 40 would be less money, I guess. The new date just also looks great, in my opinion. Don't know if they are available in yellow gold. That's a good question, because they always used to be back in the day. There, there, there were a lot of date just in yellow gold kicking around. So uh, Rolex site is very frustrating. You heard it. it. Absolutely it is. Can't find the Rolex you want, not even on the darn website. <laughs> that's, that's the facts. I mean, we're not, hey, we're not making this stuff up here, folks. We're doing this live. We're showing you folks live here on the, you know, on the set. What, what the heck is going on here? I mean, you know, we're not making anything up here. Uh agree thought i would get a day date if in market for precious metal rolex vegas in the house the best looking gold rolex currently available is arguably the yacht master 40 mil in rose gold with rubber strap yeah see i i don't want to go with the rubber strap not not for a, in a high dollar watch like that and gold i want all gold man I, I that's just the way i want to go on that Let's see here. On the site, Craig, don't give up. If you go back <laughs> to the screen you were on, on the far left of the screen, there was a little arrowhead. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Okay, so on the far left of the screen, there's a little arrow. Do uh, you mean here? Um, it's not doing anything. Okay, go under Menu. Rolex watches. Find your Rolex. Here we go. All right. We want gold. And I want yellow gold. All right. I thought I said yellow gold. How come it's showing me rose gold? Okay, there we go. Now I got yellow gold. All right. So here we got a couple of Rolexes. We got a Date 840. I would not want the one with the Roman numerals just because I want Loom and I don't want the diamonds, so I'm not going to go there. And here's another one with diamonds, Date 840. Uh, and I don't want to go there on that Date 836. Now, the Date 840 there on the right, that would be a contender. That would be a contender, but when we get to the one with the black dial, that would be the way I would go. Not that one with the diamonds. Lady date just. Date just 31. How come they're not showing the one with the black dial? The date date. Page one. Is there another page? Okay. So we're looking at all the gold watches, I guess, that they offered. They didn't show the day date with the black dial. I wonder if they discontinued that. Yeah, I don't think I'd go for the, the Cosmograph. I, I don't think I'd go there. Um, Yachtmaster 2, no, I think that would be a no-fly zone. I wouldn't go there either. Sky Dweller, eh. Definitely not a super case. I definitely would not get the Submariner date in yellow gold. I, I, this super case for me is a no-fly zone. There's another date, 836. Date, 840. There's the one with the black tile. So there we go. I think that's the one. That date, 840 right there. I, I mean, I th that's the one Dudley bought. I, I think that's the... They don't have a very good selection, let's face it. They do not have a very good selection. That's the watch, 38,850 list. He paid 285, I believe, for his. New, brand new. Um so there you go. Um 
Well, if I go to configure, I don't know that it's going to let me change. I don't think it's going to let me like put like a Jubilee bracelet on here or something. No, I don't think it's going. Choose your model. Select. We've been Oh, it's it's asking me if I want to put a diamond bezel on there. All right, forget about it. I I give up again. <laughs> you guys can <laughs> you guys can go through all this. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, you have to use the little arrows and swipes the new watch in the screen. All right, Charles. Silver is considered too soft, and it also leaves a black or green stain on your wrist from your body perspiration. Yeah, I would think it would, uh, you know, tarnish and everything else. Uh, hi, Craig. All checking in briefly between meetings. We'll watch the replay. <laughs> David Williams in the house is going to watch the replay. There we go. Uh, if you're thinking of getting a rubber strap, get the VC Overseas Generation 3. You can interchange it with a bracelet and leather strap. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I would pass on all those. I don't like any of those integrated bracelet watches. I would pass on all those and just get a Date 840 and be done with it. Click the Date 836. Well, Charles, why do you, would, you, would you go with the 36? I mean, I agree. The 36 is a nice piece, but if you're wanting something more up in the size range of a GMT or something, I think you've got to go with the Date 840. Uh, but, yeah, 36 would be a good move. But you can't get the black dial. That's the problem. It's not available. Steel Smurf, Submariner, the entire world would go crazy about it. There you go. Um, best looking solid gold Rolex is the Date 840, hands down. Blue Shirt Buddha's in the house making a statement. I can't argue with that. Uh, then you need to configure Charles Moore. So, yeah, I'm in the configuring section here of the Date 840, and it looks like I can, um, yeah, see, I can add the diamond thing on there. Yeah, I don't want the diamond thing. But, see, it's not letting me, for example, put a Jubilee bracelet on it or anything like that. It's not giving you that much in the way of configuration options. Back in the day, there were a lot more options on Rolexes. I can, I can remember you could get a lot of different watches with Jubilee bracelets, um, you couldn't put like a president bracelet on a GMT. No, they didn't let you do that. But th it seemed like there was more, more versatility back in the day. Um, uh, need to configure the Day Date Thirty Six Two Thousand Nineteen model. Okay, let me go back and see. I'll take one more shot at this. Let's go back to for the Day Date Thirty Six. Okay, I'm going to go to yellow gold again. Yellow gold. Okay. Now, I had to click on it twice for it to do its thing. Okay, here's a date date 36. All right, so I'm clicking on this. All right. I'm clicking on configure. All right. And choose your model. I guess it's this one. All right, now choose your material, yellow gold. Okay, I've already got that. So what do I do? Just click here? Oh, okay. All right, so let me click here. So that's my mo my gold. Now I guess I click the arrow. Well, now it's changing it again. I guess that's all I can do is choose the material. Oh, and then I say select. All right. All right, so now I can configure. I can add the diamonds around the, the bezel, see? See, it's not letting me do very much. It's not letting me take the diamonds off the dial, for example. It's not letting me put loom on the hands. It's not letting me do diddly squat. <laughs> it's not letting me do diddly. That's what I say. That's what I say. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, uh, should let you change bracelet and configure the dial you want, Charles Moore. Yeah, they should. Uh, thoughts on Tudor Black Bay 58 as a daily? I would pass on the Tudors. Pass on the Tudors. Get yourself a Grand Seiko, something like that. Or get a real Rolex. I would pass on the Tudor. Tudor Black Bay 58 is a good option to consider as a beater. Grand Seiko is an alternative as it competes with Tudor in the market. Yeah, I'd definitely go with the Grand Seiko. Oh, geez, don't bring up Tudor. <laughs> you won't like the answer. True liberty in the house being true. Being true to liberty. I have a Speedmaster 311.30.42.30. Okay. And also a Seamaster 300 meter 2017. Which should I sell first to get a Grand Seiko SBGR 053 automatic? I would definitely get, see which one you can get the most money for, is where I would be on that. And maybe the Speedmaster would be the one to sell at this point in time because of all the moon stuff and all that. Maybe you can get top dollar for it. It just depends on which one you can get the most money out of. They're not easy to sell. So whatever you can get the most money out of, I'd sell them both, tell you the truth, and get the Grand Seiko and not look back. I sold my Omega some years ago, and I haven't looked back. Um, all this data they talk I'd happy with a humble little 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual. Well, yeah, the 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual is a great watch, a great all-around watch. You're not going to get any arguments from me. It's nice and thin. You don't have a date to mess with on less than 31 month days. I mean, it's there's a lot positive, good things to be said about a Oyster Perpetual 36. Takes less time to make a Rolex than to configure one on their website. <laughs> Mike, Mike coming through with 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 the sage comments. <clears throat> Charles Moore back in the house with a wrench, and he says to configure you have to go through the steps, select the vessel you want. After it, we'll move to dial and bracelet, etc. I don't think it's going to let you, uh, Charles. It's not going to let me. I, I'm on the look here. I'm in the configuration site. All right, so let's say I all right, let's say I decide I want this. All right? And then I say select. All right? So now I got diamonds around there, diamonds around there. Okay, so now Okay, so now it's um it's letting me add more diamonds. It's that's all it's doing. It's not letting me um change the bracelet. It's not letting me change the dial. Okay, I'm going to do the diamonds. I'm going to say select. So I got it loaded up with diamonds. Okay, now it is letting me do a dial. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, this is painful though. Alright, so let, let me see here. All it's letting me do is bling it out even more. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I don't think it's going to let me put a Jubilee bracelet on there ever. Okay, I'm going to go here. View this model. Okay, reset. I'm going to reset. All right. All right, here we go. Select the model. Okay, there we go. I selected that. So I'm going to go next. All right, see? See, it's not letting me get to the bracelet. It's letting me add diamonds. All right, well, let's, th let's go back. Let's not add the diamonds. Let's say select. Okay, so we select that. Now all it's doing is it's letting me add the, the bracelet, the diamonds down the middle of the bracelet. It's not letting me change it to like an oyster bracelet or something. Or, you know, a jubilee. It's not going to let me do that. Right, let me say select here. Now it's just letting me do the dial. I will grant you it's letting us do more things, but I don't see a dial here with loom on it of all those choices. Let's go back. I guess that one has loom. I can't really tell. I think that one has loom. The gold dial. Champagne color dial. Go with the date 840 with the black dial. That's that's it. I think that's where we are. Uh, let's see here. 
can keep the omegas. <laughs> um, what's the wait time on a Rolex Day Date and the Date Just? There's n you should be able to buy a Day Date anywhere. They should be very readily available. And I think for around that $28,500 price, I think you'll be able to get one. Uh, I believe they're making Day Date 36 to appeal more to female taste. You can still get it in Champagne Dial, though, thankfully. Yeah, but you can't get the Black Dial. Uh, you did a no-no. You used the T-word tutor, <laughs> like waving a red flag in front of a bull. Um, what's the wait time? Okay, we already talked about that. The Day Date and the Date date Justs, I think, are around, too. I think they're around. Uh Let's see here. Uh, Ser Sergio loves Tudor. Craig plus select after each choice. <laughs> okay, I did. I gone. I've gone through it now, Charles. We're on that. <laughs> you have to configure the configuration. <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> Absolutely. Configure the configuration. I'm all over that. <laughs> Love the content. Finally created a channel so I can chime in. Love the GS. Uh, now have two. Uh-oh. Just picked up the beautiful pre-owned SBGH255. Absolutely love it. The other is a GMT spring drive. So let's do the SBGH255. Pull it up here. Try to find this puppy here. Oh, this is the this is the beast. This is the beast. I'm gonna pull it up here. This is the beast of all beasts. This is a heavy duty puppy. I mean, I tell you, you you want something for heavy duty use. There you go. $9,600 list price. And I believe this one is titanium, correct? Let's check here. Exterior, yep, high intensity titanium. There you go. 46.9 mils, so it's a little bit bigger, and it is thicker. It's 17 mils thick, so it's thicker than mine. Mine's 14. And that's the only reason why I wouldn't go with this one is it's a little bit big and thick for my use case, but it's it's stunning. I mean, you gotta you gotta admit, whoops, you gotta admit that puppy is stunning, stunning. Oh man, that is pretty freaking. Amazing. If you want a big watch, if that's where you are, if you want a big, heavy duty, heavy use watch. My gosh, you could you could use that thing to hammer nails. I mean that that is a heavy duty. Did I say that is a heavy duty piece? Um, Craig, what do you think of Rolex's claim that it takes a full year to make just one watch? My BS tech detector is giving me a reading. Well, I mean, if you set it off to the side for a month or two and then <laughs> and put it back in the production process i'm sure you can stretch it out to a year <laughs> that's i don't know i don't know what they're doing they're probably doing a lot of this right <laughs> you ever see people twiddling their thumbs <laughs> that's probably what's going on there a lot of twiddling twiddly d twiddly dumbs um would be my guess on that one <laughs> uh yeah I like both, but I'm having issues with the lug pins not aligning with the pinholes on my Speedy. Just frustrating. I dropped off the Swatch Group, and they quoted me 139 See, this is the thing. I, I just don't like watches that give trouble and that are high maintenance. Uh, extremely attractive females are, you know, give trouble and are high maintenance, and sometimes they're worth putting up with, but not for a watch. I'm not going to put up with that kind of stuff on a watch. It, it's just got to work. It's just got to be bulletproof reliable no issues no run strips or errors it's just got to do its thing and this one and this one both fall into that category now this one's much easier for me to adjust the bracelet because of the four micro adjustments so that's a big plus on this one 
So um, I'm going to wrap up here pretty soon. Put any comments in the chat so that I don't miss yours, and because we're going to wrap this puppy up. Um, let's see here. Welcome, Alexander. Okay. Omega Rolex, greater than Omega, greater than Grand Seiko, greater than Tudor, currently in the market. Buy GS for good value. GS are being sold at a great discount nowadays because nobody buys GS at retail. Well, yeah, I would get a discount. Um, I think you can get this watch for in the neighborhood of 5000 5500 5000 used for sure in really good shape. I think you can buy this watch. It's a $7100 retail. I don't think I don't know if you can buy it new from an AD for that. You might have to go like 5800 or something. But yeah, I would definitely get a discount. Um you know, shop a couple of ADs, get a discount, but get a watch that you really like and then wear it and enjoy it. That's the big thing. And just buy it as a watch to wear and enjoy. I mean, they're not investments, folks. They're, they're something to just enjoy, I think. That's how I look at it. Um, and buy the best watch you can comfortably afford, you know, that you're not, you're not stretching to buy so that it doesn't cause you heartache. Life's too short to have things like that cause you heartache. Let's see here. Thanks, Vegas. Uh, see all the regulars coming. Love the content. Decided to join in. Alexander in the house. Uh, you can configure your Rolex any way you want as long as it is the two Rolex has already pre-approved up. <laughs> there you go. I think if you configure the other day date 36, not 2019, it will allow more options like dial colors, etc., Okay. All right. Well, that's a good thing to know. I wonder if you can get a black dial on it. Are you trying to get me in this Rolex, <laughs> in this Rolex configurator? Configurator. Let's see here. Find your Rolex. We're going to do this one more time. One more time. Okay. Let's say I want gold. <clears throat> I want yellow gold okay uh, okay so not the new new one day date 40 not a day date 40 let's find a day date 36 new model okay so we don't want the new model there's another new model these are all new models so far the day date 36 is I'm trying to find a one that does not say new model Uh, I guess we got to go to the next page. Um, new model. New model. Date eight forty. See, it's uh, not a thirty six. New model. Date eight thirty six new model all of these have been have said new model I give up okay I, I, I just I give up on this <laughs> I'm gonna pass the torch <laughs> others can fool with these things <laughs> I'm too old for all this folks um, let's see here I believe Jack Nicholas got the black day date as he is selling the other one for charity it's in the news. He wore it at Wimbledon. He he wore the day date forty with the black dial. Can somebody confirm that? That'd be cool to know. It's a big one. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah. Oh my, got that. Oh my, got that's a mon monstrosity. Well, here's the thing though. The advantage to that GS. If you're gonna get a big watch, at least it's titanium. So it's going to wear like a significantly smaller watch. So as far as comfort goes, it's assuming you've got a big enough wrist to pull it off, I, I'd want at least a 7.25 inch wrench wrist to try to pull that puppy off, at least 7.25. 
better probably seven and a half inch wrist to pull that puppy off. Uh, let's see. You can do curls with that baby watch doctor. I love your 2312. It was that or the SVH 255. Love them both. Yeah, I, I just think from a practical standpoint for me, this size is about is the max I wanted to go. It just it just fits nice on the wrist for my purposes. So there you go. Um, plus five, minus three seconds a day. That's a big heavy duty Grand Seiko. Craig wouldn't like it. Charles Moore. Um, high beat. Oh, so this one's a high beat. Okay, well, here's the thing about Grand Seiko is they always under promise and over deliver. My guess is this thing will be more accurate than what they promise. Uh, because they that's how they do it that's how they do uh, that's just what Grand Seiko does under promise uh, and over deliver yes let's see Craig would you go for the GS SBGA 285 for 3,000 pounds or an Oyster Perpetual Black at list 4350 in the UK um Okay, let's pull up the SBGA 285. SBGA 285. We're going to take a look at this. Would I buy that or the Oyster Perpetual? Um, hmm. Let's look at the specifications on this real quick. 39 by 12.3, so it's nice and trim, so you could really wear this. You could wear this as an all-arounder. Um... If the lack of loom is a non-issue to you, if the lack of loom is a non-issue to you, and the lack, I'm pretty sure this is not going to have micro adjustments. So if those two things are not deal killers for you, I would definitely go with the Grand Seiko. Otherwise, I would go with the Oyster Perpetual. That's what I would do. Let's see here. Uh, Cheetown, uh, maybe that is why Rolex has a supply shortage. Their robots are procrastinators. <laughs> the robots. <laughs> Swatch Group is the General Motors of, of watch corporations. Roger in the house, 499. What do you think about the We? Tag Hewer Monaco retro green dial, only 169 made. Um, let's try this. Let's try to pull this up. Tag Hewer. Monaco. Um, accept cookies. Come on. Um, I don't know which one you're talking about. Oh, the, the green dial. Hmm. Maybe it's not here on the website. Let's see if it's here on the... Well, anyway, here here's the deal on this watch. I mean, I'm not a fan. I, 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 I'm not... I don't like square watches. I'm just not enamored with it. 
Now, if you really like the look of that watch and you think it'll look great on your wrist and you think you'll really enjoy it, go for it, right? But it's not, it, first of all, I like watches on bracelets. These typically are not. I don't even know if there's a bracelet available for them. Uh, so it just wouldn't be where I would go. And, and I don't care about production numbers on watches. I care about is it something I really like. If it's a limited production watch and it happens to be something I really like, fine. But I will not pay a premium for it um, because more often than not, it, 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 it's not worth it. So, uh, but that's just me. So uh, Marlon Brando's Rolex GMT Master worn in a pocket. Yeah, hey, I heard about that. Yeah, absolutely. Cool movie. Uh, thanks, Craig. Always learn something and have some good laughs on a uh, Craig Chip broadcast. Click on the bell, hit subscribe, and click the thumbs up. There you go. Our wags in the house. Absolutely, it's very helpful if you click that bell. You'll get a little notification when we're going live. That's how that works. And hopefully they're working now. Make sure your settings are set up so that you get those email notifications. Go into your notification settings on, on your YouTube. New Day Date has only been out for a couple of months, so the dial options are more limited. I completely disagree. GS, greater than Rolex, greater than Omega. <laughs> GS, I mean, it's it's hard to um, argue with the quality of Grand Seiko. I mean, they're pretty amazing. Like I say, I would love for them to come out with updated bracelets with micro adjustments, and there's some things that they could deal with, but their overall quality is pretty freaking amazing if you ask me and the spring drive is just a it's just a freak of nature i mean it's just freaking amazing eric in the house afternoon craig late to the party yes folks are buying ugly watches yes i'm looking at you <laughs> yeah um hi all how's everyone there you go and uh, eric unfortunately we're getting ready to wrap up here pretty soon so i hate to break the news to you but we're going to wrap this puppy up because i'm getting hungry what is your thoughts on comparing grand seiko quartz versus the citizen high actually quartz? i think the 9f is a more rugged design I, I I like the overall design of the 9f and i like the fact that it's been out for so long and they've got all the kinks worked out of it um, I think the 9F is the way to go. Uh, there are a lot of design and, and construction advantages to it as far as, I think, durability and, and long, long life. So um, I, I think the 9F is definitely the way to go. And that's my opinion. That's why I bought that puppy right there. Absolutely. Time for me to hit the sack, says Peter. Thanks for the good time, and see you guys next time. Thanks for everything, Craig, and the rest of you guys as well. I enjoy watching and participating whenever time allows. Have a wonderful day to all. There you go. Uh, Rolex seems to list only new models on the website. Anyway, there is a lot of those Date 836 watches. Click, um, click one. We'll let you have different options, and we'll find black dial, avoid diamonds, ones if you want loom. There you go. Charles Moore in the house, giving us some clarity. Some clarity. Too funny. I was looking at Air King 114210, 34 mil Air King with blue concentric dial, orange uh, Arabic numbers. Quirky. Okay. That does sound quirky. Um Salmon and avocado. I might have some salmon. I'm definitely have some avocado. Uh, definitely some potato. Um, I might have some salmon today. Maybe just some chicken. Maybe just some chicken. Cheat Town, California. All right, we're going to wrap this puppy up again. Thanks everybody for tuning in to this special live broadcast. And we may have some exciting news coming. Uh, stay tuned. That's all I can say. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Hey, click that little bell, subscribe button, all those kind of good things, and the thumbs up, all that kind of good stuff. Thanks again.